so as you may have seen outside as well uh, eka is about environment conscious mobility uh, we are a full range full stack ev player we are not into fossil fuel we are only into electric battery electric and we are also having aspirations in fuel cell hydrogen vehicles we'll come to that but uh, eka as a vision is about environment conscious mobility into commercial vehicles we have a full range we are right from in the good segment we are doing a three wheeler and from there we'll go right up to the 55 ton tractor in the passenger vehicle again the three wheeler will have its six seater counterpart people mover going right up to the low floor buses that you are seeing today in the high capacity segment uh, as you can see behind me we have a strong technology lineup with vdl of netherlands VDL is a leader in bus segment in the European market and also worldwide they play. We are also backed by someone like Mitsui of Japan. So in terms of Eka having access to technology and backing and a interface into the international markets, we have a unique combination as I spoke about. Uh, with VDL we also have another tie up where we do a lot of fixtures. So if you look at Eka's preposition, you will have Eka and Pinnacle rather pinnacle mobility which is our group company pinnacle and vdl have a tie up to do high end fixtures which helps us design our jigs and fixtures which will deliver a very high standard of the structure that is the backbone of a bus once that structure is ready if you look at again the pinnacle industries group the next bigger thing in a bus is the seating solutions the interiors those are also in house so our proposition will be very strong in the sense that we will have a control over the pricing rather more than control we will have a lot of value addition to do in the pricing we will have a very reliable supply chain most of the things will become in house and the rest we are of course localizing and making so as a aspiration in eka we want to first expand in the domestic market we will be displaying the complete range in the time to come currently what you see is a 9 meter bus we also have a 7 meter we have a 12 meter which is already homologated we are working on a low floor within about a year less than a year we should be out with our 13.5 meter coach which will be one more thing to be very proud about and in the international market also because of our vdl tie up our technology etc is available ready we are also looking at how fast we can expand with the help of mitsui Uh, we can expand into some of the world markets that is also in the background which we are working on so there are three things that i will touch upon first is that the range anxiety is dependent upon how much battery you pack on a vehicle but more importantly what kind of efficiency you are able to deliver on a vehicle now i don't want to comment on others but eka's efficiencies of the battery utilization for per kilometer consumption of kilowatt is one of the best so in the 9 meter we will be we will be from 0.8 to 0.9 kind of efficiency will be delivered so that is where one reason how you can increase you can kill the range anxiety and provide higher number of kilometers in the same battery capacity the other is about the in inherent design the lighter the bus it will be further more efficient these are things which we are doing but the third thing that i want to talk about is that range anxiety happens in two ways one operation is intra city where a lot of loop operations happen so range anxiety there is of a different nature that will it be able to do a certain amount of kilometers in a single charge but the charging happens in a contained environment in a depot that i think by and large is already over the advantage here that here will be that how much you can do a single charge by reducing the battery size because you have a better efficiency that will be the differentiator the other segment is the longer haul which is the intercity that is where i think a lot of advantage of light weighting etc will come and there also we are talking about fast charging we are talking about these buses even if they are not in a loop they are on a fixed route the stoppages etc are fixed if you can design innovatively in terms of the weight being less you can have parallel charging of you know packs that are there in the bus you will still be able to address the range anxiety and then 
there are routes for 350 kilometers 400 and so on so forth you go from one place to the other and during the changeover or the from the return journey when you are planning at that time if you are able to charge the bus in let's say two hours or one and a half hours the range anxiety doesn't hurt so i i as a professional do not see it as a hindrance for the adoption of evs whether it is intracity intracity though it is already taken care even in intracity i don't see it as a hindrance and then there are some other applications where the running itself is very low. For example, school or a staff bus, where the running itself is very low. If you adequately adequate size of battery capacity you place on the bus, the range anxiety will not be a hindrance. The mechanism is not very different from what it used to be in any other vehicle for that matter, agnostic of the fuel, but this vehicle being a newer technology, relatively newer technology to operators, the confidence from the OEMs and especially from ECA, I can speak on behalf of ECA, we are willing to enter into a contract for 10 years, 12 years, depending on what contract you have, and we will give you a fleet management service. So whether you want a comprehensive AMC, annual maintenance contract, or you have a comprehensive fleet management service, in both cases, ECA is ready whether it is part supply, whether it is setting up an entire ecosystem within your depot to be able to service the bus, we are also willing to enter into a contract where an uptime can be guaranteed. Mostly everybody, but I am again speaking on behalf of ECA, I think it's the LFP battery which by and large has been proven by practice is the safest and the best in terms of performance. It's an LFP battery, the cells are separately procured and then there is a pack manufacturing that happens. This is a cell to pack technology where you are able to pack in one of the packs about 100, kg, 100 kilowatts of battery. So as I said, as a company, we have an aspiration to be environment participant in an environment conscious mobility people as well as goods, we are in commercial vehicle space and we believe that like the buses which is more of intracity and the most of the congestion and pollution happens in the intracity environment, the similarly the last mile transportation is very crucial and as you rightly pointed out because of it being in many ways a fixed route nature, it is the low hanging fruit for us. Currently, the comparison is being drawn from fossil fuels because there is ignorance around what kind of hidden costs are involved when it comes to fossil fuel. Therefore, the adoption may take a little while. But in the last mile, whether it is e-commerce or sometimes quick commerce, quick commerce is mostly on two wheelers and other vehicles also. But e-commerce is a very strong adopter, early adopter. So whether you talk about the business providers, the likes of Amazons or maybe uh, flip cards, whether you talk about the logistic service providers to them, someone like if I can take a name, uh, someone like a delivery for example or Amazon Transportation Services Limited. So the entire ecosystem is convinced that EV adoption is the thing and this is not only about not having pollution or having an EV, it's about the TCO itself justifying the vehicle's presence. So when you do the economics, the total cost of ownership in an EV the moment you extend the tenor to a certain level, you will find that it is cheaper than a fossil fuel way. So we are one and a half tons already selling, one and a half ton GBW is there. People have come out with intelligent usage on this, various applications are being developed, including very, we very recently sold a, a refrigerated van. We, a lot of things are now on the media, we did a very good uh, tie up with um, IKEA where a lot of furniture del delivery etc is happening. So those are things which are gradually taping, taking shape and it will progress further. As anybody would be in a bus industry, we, we would be flexible to what the customer requirement would be in terms of customization. As Pinnacle Industries, we are based out of Pitampur in Indore and also in Pune. A lot of Pinnacle Industries, seating solutions, special purpose vehicles, railway seating, etc. The establishment is out of Pitampur. A lot of ambulances etc. happen there. 
From there, we source our material into the seating solutions, etc. Are sourced here in Pune. We have two factories, uh, rather three. One is a machine shop, which is also a group company called Instar. We have two factories, one in Chakan, one in Koregaon, where we are setting up the bus capacity. Currently, we have set up the capacity for three thousand. We are a new entrant. We are young. We are trying to procure orders for the steady state production to be there, and then depending on what the order book will look like, the capacity can be expanded to up to six thousand and even higher, or maybe a, another additional setup may also be thought about once the order pipeline builds up. This is the bus per annum, buses per annum. And similarly, in Chakan, we also have a setup for the smaller commercial vehicles. We can do up to hundred a month as of now. And depending on the need, we can go up to about two and a half thousand, three thousand. But there, it's about the line. So as and when it starts to build up, we will be setting up additional lines to go to any number that is required. That's true for the three-wheeler line also, which is currently under setup. I would like to start by saying that any single incidents that happens of such nature, a thermal incidents. Irrespective of it happens with whichever brand, I think is very unfortunate, and uh, it should not happen. Uh, we have to take sufficient care as players in the industry to see that it doesn't happen. From an ECA perspective, the design at the design stage itself, itself, the vendor integration starts with safety as one of the very strong parameters there. We don't compromise on whether it is soft validation or it is a normal validation, including. the torture track physical validation we ensure that those parameters that we set those norms for safety that has been set those things are very religiously and rigorously followed including working with vendors who are also of the same mindset and not going with uh, where there may be any compromise in on top of that you have the certifying agencies who do a very thorough check up so to that extent i think we are taking a lot of care that no such incidents happens but i repeat any such incidents if it happens it is very unfortunate and we have to be very careful that these things don't happen